yeah earlier video quality last video quality was it good <coughs> i think i already uploaded <coughs> hello please kalyan uh, yes sir it is good done okay then uh, if i go 30 f frame per second that the video quality good if I go less than that, the space, the memory space will be reduced. <coughs> That's what I'm asking. So, okay, again, I give 30. The early last week, last class, we gave that only. Okay. <coughs> hey guys, good morning. I think are you able to see my screen? <coughs> yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. The last class we discussed, <clears throat> I mean, beam strength, and we discussed up to effective load. <clears throat> now, some small part missed just last class. We discussed that in the effective load on gear teeth. Then we move to the wear strength today. <clears throat> then we go for the problem. Okay, this is the today planning. We try to complete this gear chapter, uh, maybe in the next class. <clears throat> okay now see here this is already we discussed <clears throat> okay i mean service factor starting torque due to be rated torque right and we discussed also velocity factor because <clears throat> the gear design the methods of gear design i mean sorry the methods of uh, dynamic loads we are following two methods one is a based on approximation of velocity factor. I mean, that based on approximation of velocity factor, that thing with the that thing, the dynamic load will be continued. Finding the dynamic load will be continued using Buckingham equation. <clears throat> that is the final stage of gear design. <clears throat> I mean, the dynamic load, dynamic load of the gear design based on these two methods. One is velocity factor as well as Buckingham equation. I mean, before finding this bucking, enter into the velocity, I mean, Buckingham equation, we should know what is the velocity factor. The velocity factor, the guy who developed, I mean, from his research, <clears throat> I mean, Bach, he used, I mean, he def, I mean, defined this velocity factor of this, I mean, CV, CV's velocity factor is a three by three plus V, based on that gear <clears throat> cutting process and here what is the velocity we are following pitch lane velocity when the pitch lane velocity 10, 10 less than 10 meter per second we are using this formula <clears throat> when the pitch lane velocity less than 20 meter per second i mean above 10 meter per second but up to 20 meter per second we are using this formula when this velocity factor we are using the velocity when this velocity pitch lane velocity greater than 20 meter per second we are using this formula <clears throat> okay now later please keep in mind while designing the prop while designing the gear we are doing cross verification <clears throat> v is equal to pi d and divided by 16 to 10 power 3 okay the, now this is v is the pitch and velocity we are doing cross verifications we are doing validations during problem you can understand now Finally, effective load is equal to nothing but a CS by this is service factor of velocity factor into PT tangential load. I mean, as we discussed in the last class, <clears throat> our beam strength SB is greater than or equal to P effective load. <clears throat> effective load. The P effective only now we are discussing CS by CV into PT. <clears throat> now, now. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay now i come to this the velocity factor empirical relations we discussed based on the 
birth concept okay birth concept to develop the velocity factor concept now that velocity factors accepted by i mean american gear manufacturing associations and uh, till we are i mean uh, using that formula for design our gears that's what the first many years we are i mean that is whatever that concept empirical relations developed by bath developed by the person bath still we are using and it's giving satisfactory result in the design aspect of the gear <coughs> okay now we are going to <coughs> final stage of the gear design in the final stage of the gear designs we are considering the errors what are the errors in gear what are the errors in pinion while manufacturing those also it will be considered while problem <coughs> we are going to understand this how we are using errors e error is some of error some of the errors in gear teeth some of the errors in pinion sorry some of the errors in gear some of the some of the errors in pinion some of the errors in gear and pinion okay now <clears throat> and this is i mean the guy finally that the bucking on develop this is the p effective load is nothing but cs into pt plus pd hello sir i am in class tell me yeah please call me after reno class sir i am in class now okay please yeah 11 11:15 i am ready to come <clears throat> yeah please hmm 11:15 please <clears throat> okay now this is the early buckingham developed this effective load is nothing but a cs plus p cs into pt i mean this cs in pt and pd this he added the dynamic load <clears throat> the pd is a dynamic load this i mean also called additional load due to dynamic conditions while two teeth are meshing i mean gear teeth and pinion teeth now this is the also called the incremental load <clears throat> incremental load at incremental load now pd is equal to 21v i mean in his research he developed this equation from his research pd dynamic load is equal to 21v v is from i mean v 21v into c c is nothing but a deformation factor newton per mm squared <clears throat> e is nothing but a error summation of error in uh, gear a uh, gear and pinion b is nothing but the face width of the gear face width of the tooth b pt is a tangential load then 21b plus square square of root of eb i mean ceb plus pt this is the equation developed by buckingham we are directly we are using this i mean if you want to go back <clears throat> i mean just you google it buckingham equations you can get it this uh, journal paper but the journal papers also many things it will be hid uh, hidden i mean i mean we cannot see example my thesis is a two two sixty pages but the paper whatever the paper published only mean maximum fifteen pages so that's what <clears throat> you, have to, you have to spend more time to understand okay anyway straight away we are using this equation from whatever he developed with this uh, dynamic load condition okay this is the equation developed by him <clears throat> okay now this is same <clears throat> now one more thing we missed out here <clears throat> i mean that uh, c c is nothing but uh, deformation factor the deformation factor is a uh, c is equal to k by deformation factor <clears throat> the deformation factor depends upon the my elastic moduli of the material mate of the material is nothing but pinion and gear and form tooth and the form tooth or pressure angle these are the parameters i mean i mean the c is deformation based on the <clears throat> modulus of velocity of the material and the form tooth of the gear or pressure angle form you may know either form tooth of the gear or pressure angle 
from these relations <clears throat> we are able to find out what is c because the c is now we didn't discuss earlier i mean sorry the deformation factor we didn't discuss earlier okay the c is the empirical equation we are directly using i mean the same person developed this same i mean deformation factor equation okay now this is the <clears throat> now estimation of model based beam strength now first we discussed and what we we discuss first we discuss the beam strength i mean beam strength yes b i mean first we discuss the pt from pt we discuss we came to sb when the yes, pt increased when the pt is equal to what is the equation we discuss pt is equal to i mean mb more i mean mb into sorry small m mb into sigma b into y <coughs> capital y right now in this <coughs> see when the pt increase our pt increase obviously sigma b is going to be increase but when the pt increase when this uh, i mean simultaneously sigma b reaches the permissible stress value then corresponding that pt only we are considering beam strength sigma s b i mean we are using new notation instead of pt we are using <coughs> beam strength s b now that s b <coughs> s b now we can already we we came to know that the basic concept s b is greater than or equal to p effective load <clears throat> right p effective load we just now we discuss <clears throat> now i am take now we would like to use from this reason i would like to find out my gear model because in the standard pressure angle 14.5 degree and uh, 20 degree and uh, for 20 degree full stub i mean uh, stub teeth we discussed early the gear was defined the addendum width of the gear dedendum of the gear all are and the clearance of the gear fillet radius were defined in terms of model now from this relation we would like to find out model value <clears throat> that's what we are now we are uh, discussing about we are discussing using this two relations beam strength and effective load concept we are using to find out our model of the gear <clears throat> okay now this is the concept sb always greater than p effective load for safe design of the gear <clears throat> gear tool right now if suppose i would like to put you instead of greater than i am putting equal to this is equal to now when i am putting equal then i have to introduce factor of safety right obviously we have to introduce factor of safety now this is equation and now we know this equation <clears throat> i mean p effective equation p effective load p a e f effective load p e f we know from this two equation when you are comparing we able to find out what is the model of the gear <clears throat> that's what our intention here now now the recommended factor i mean is 21.52 to now we already know that pt right no just uh, pt we already know uh, from this pt I mean this is mt is equal to pt into d by 2 <clears throat> from this relations we already we I mean we already came to know that the mt we have written in terms of standard equation uh, i mean power equation p is equal to 2 pi nt divided by 60 from this relations we came here okay now see here <clears throat> all the things are going to discuss now now 2 mt divided by d dash mt divided by the d dash is nothing but maybe gear or maybe pinion now i generally i am considering m is it 2 divided by m is it now this is the i mean this is the relation came from our standard power equation 2 pi nt divided by 60 <clears throat> from that relations of power is equal to I mean right and mt what is mt we able to find out okay this is only we defined pt <clears throat> now i come to this our equation where we are focusing sb is equal to p effective load into fos <clears throat> now we already discussed p effective load is equal to cs by cv then c into pt then pt is here then substitute here now we are getting effective load 
now we already know that <coughs> now i mean yes b beam strength is equal to nothing but mb into sigma b into y now mb into sigma b into y here now i am introducing sigma b value we already we know that sut divided by 3 <coughs> as per the early buckingham suggestion this ultimate central strength divided by 3 for defining the permissible bending stress value then sut divided by 3 now in this equation, just I'm introducing multiplying and dividing by m. Then finally, this equation m squared into b by m into s u t divided by three into y. I'm not changing the equation. <coughs> just the equation is modified by introducing uh, multi multiplying m, dividing by m, and mul the using a sigma b value, permissible value. This is my s b <coughs> beam strength. Now, what is our A equation? SB is equal to P effect into FS. Substitute here in the, this equation. I mean, P effective load and our beam strength equation. Substitute in our equation A. Finally, simplify this e relation from this equation A, B, and C. We are getting, this is a model of the, our gear. Model of the, I mean, model of the gear or pinion. <clears throat> 16 to 10 power 6 divided by pi into cs into fs divided by z n c v b by m into s u t divided by 3 into y all for 1 by 3. now this equation we are going to use for our design the gear tooth or pinion teeth now how can i use this <clears throat> here all our common terminology is that n i mean here we didn't mention for example is that is that is i didn't mention here is that g for is that for gear or pinion because in the design analysis, we are going to consider sigma b into y. This is define our strength of the pinion or strength of the gear. <clears throat> Which one is, suppose, <clears throat> I mean, the gear is, um, the pinion is less, the less strength as compared to gear, then we are going to use here, is it to p. Suppose my gear strength is less than the pinion, I'm going to use here, so, I mean, is that a subscript G based on gear? So hence the common term, common formula we derived from this our mod derived from this our beam strength and the effective load calculation. Okay. Now I come to this <coughs> brief conclusion what we discuss as a flow. I mean this is the I mean circular pitch. This is a diameter pitch. We already discussed this is a model of the gear. 1 by PD is the model of gear. This is the velocity ratio or gear ratio, right? This is the center distance between the gear, I mean, pinion and gear, okay? Now, this is this is a terminology. The same terminology we are going to use in our design problem, gear design problem, <clears throat> okay? Now, this is the amount of torque transmitted in terms of clover, speed of the pinion or gear, and the tangential component, effective load, this is starting rate of torque. This is the nothing but our <clears throat> service factor. This is nothing but our velocity factor based on the bath formula. Okay. Now this is the permissible bending stress ultimate strength. This is the it will decide our gear is less than or pinion is less than. From this we are able to find out. Now this is the <clears throat> concept. In order to avoid the breakage or failure of the gear tooth, we should follow this. Okay, we should follow this for finding our model. Okay, <clears throat> now this is the equations. Just we kept it. I have been kept it in this single slide to understand for our is understanding for our design problem. And I come to the next we on is wear strength of the gear teeth. Now, whatever we discussed earlier case, how much bending moment is acting. <clears throat> Yeah. Now, earlier case, what we consider, <clears throat> I mean, only this uh, load is acting here. Tangential load is acting here. Now, the tangential load we considered as a simple cantilever beam. <clears throat> now, when see here, the gear is engaged or the gear, teeth, the pinion teeth engaged with the gear teeth. This is gear. This is pinion. Now, when the gear teeth or gear teeth and pinion teeth are engaged to each other, the surface, the surface going to be 
I mean, if the surface is we are I mean, that surface effect we are considering, that is nothing but surface endurance strength. <clears throat> we already discussed some of the concept. I mean, that is the uh, get to the failure kind of, uh, con uh, topic we discuss. Okay, surface endurance limit. Now the surface endurance where it is happening. I mean, the gear teeth and pinion teeth when they are engaging on the face with uh, the I mean the surface, the teeth surface here, that is the face width. That is it depends on the, I mean, the endurance strength. I mean, that's what. The failure of the gear tooth <clears throat> due to pitting occurs. When the contact stress between the two missing teeth exceeded the surface endurance limit. The pitting is due to effect of endurance stress limit, endurance strength limit. Suppose the surface endurance strength limit is reached beyond the value of permissible value, hence pitting will occur. Pitting will occur. Now, pitting will occur, that is called wear strength. Now, the wear strength is effect due to effect of pitting. The pitting is nothing but when the surface endurance strength is exceeds the permissible limit, then it will be occurs the pitting. Okay. That's all. The pitting is a surface fatigue failure characterized by, I mean, already discussed. This is a diff where we discussed in the last class, I think. <laughs> Please go through that uh, uh, the concept, okay? Uh, okay. In order to avoid this uh, failure, the properties of gear tooth and surface properties to be increased by using appropriate hardness or surface hardness. There are many techniques improving the surface hardness for annealing, for heating, heat treatment process. Through heat treatment process also it can be increased improve the surface hardness <clears throat> okay the selected uh, such as that the gear strength now the gear wear strength of the gear is more than the effective load of the meshing teeth whatever we are going to discuss now the wear strength is greater than <clears throat> our effective load now the effective load we already discussed <clears throat> effective load already we discussed Introducing dynamic load as well as static load. Okay, what is the effective load? We already discussed C S into P T plus P D. Right? I think so. One minute. <clears throat> yeah, see here. Okay, C S into P T plus P D. Now, now the effective load is a common for beam strength and V S strength. But now we are going to discuss only wear strength. <clears throat> now the wear strength analysis developed by this guy Buckingham, early Buckingham, in 1926. He did. He submitted his research work in the American Gear Manufacturing Associations. They accepted his research work, and still we are following his concept for defining the gear design based on the wear strength. The wear strength is due to effect of Pitting. The pitting occurs when the gear surface crossed the it crossed or exceeds the surface endurance strength of the gear surface. Okay. Now we enter into this <coughs> concept. Now this is a wear strength. Just see here. The maximum tangential force PT. The maximum tangential force PT transmit without pitting failure without the pitting failure okay that is known as wear strength now buckingham equation now <clears throat> the buckingham equation who developed the wear strength concept he also followed this uh, followed that uh, heads theory concept <clears throat> anyway we are not going to discuss heads theory concept heads theory co context stresses of concept in that uh, if you want please just to go through this uh, page number 124 in sigle <clears throat> you can get it more information okay now i mean this is what he considered in his uh, <clears throat> in his concept this is a uh, two cylinders i mean this cylinder may be this cylinder may be gear now this is the cylinder gear this is the cylinder pinion from these two cylinders when they are engaging, when engaging these two cylinders, okay, one minute. <clears throat> this is a gear cylinder, this is the pinion cylinder. When these two cylinders are engaged, 
then pressed together, then the contact stress is going to be created in this region. In this region, the contact stress is created in this region. That region, he assumed like this cross section. When these two cylinders engaged, he found that this is going to be this kind of shape. When these two cylinders are engaged due to, I mean, acts due to the radial load acting P here. I mean, P acting in the pinion, P acting in the gear and the pinion. While the time the, he considered this, deformation is like this. Now, I mean, due to the deformation under the load of P, the rectangular surface of the width. <clears throat> I mean, rectangular surface of the width is nothing but uh, width is 2B and the length is L. Here, length is L is nothing but the, the gear uh, length. This is a three dimension view. I am just I draw the cylinder. This is now L. This is now L. Now, this is L. I mean, this is axial length of the cylinders. Axial length of the cylinders. Now, he, he has been proved that. <clears throat> The stress distribution is like uh, elliptical shape. He has been proved that the stress distribution is like elliptical shape. Hence, in between two cylinders the cylinder is assumed to be a pinion and gear this is stress distribution characteristics based on this characteristic now this is as i mean this two side are symmetric hence we consider only one side that one side is how we consider as a half width of the deformation in mm l is actual length of the cylinders <clears throat> D1, D2 are the diameter of these two cylinders. Now, E1, E2 is the elastic model of this gear and the pinion or cylinder 1 and cylinder 2. Okay. Now, this is a Poisson ratio. Finally, he, I mean, he uh, developed this empirical relation from this. Uh, maybe he has been done some experimental work. Finally, B is equal to 2P. P is nothing but the force acting on the cylinders. Two cylinders, 2P into 1 minus mu square into 1 by E1 plus 1 by E2 the whole divided by pi L into 1 by D1 plus 1 by D2 whole power 1 by 2, a whole square root. This is the equation he developed in his paper, <coughs> in his research. Now, I mean, what is here? This What is here? This is uh, when two cylinders are pressed to each other, this is the, the interface region going to be subjected into compressive stress. That compressive stress now 2p divided by by bl 2p divided by by bl now this is a normal formula see here i mean this region of interest when this region i mix just i draw this which area he considered here this is now l this is 2b okay now from this he considered half width, half width of the deformation. Now, by BL, <clears throat> this projection area by BL, then crushing stress is equal to 2P divided by pi BL. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> sorry. Now, from this equation, now, now, actually, substitute this, our B in the, in the equation A. Finally, we are going to get this is equation for sigma C squared. From this equation, we are able to find out what is the compressive stress. What is compressive stress in between two cylinders? I mean, two cylinders in that sense, pinion and gear cylinder. Now, actually, here he introduced R1, R2. You see here, instead of D1, D2, he introduced R1, R2. But what is the effective region? While we are introducing this whole R1, it's not subjected, no? This whole R1 is not subjected to in the deformation, in the deformation characteristics, right? Hence, we would like to find out the effective R1, R2. Now, see here, that's what here, they clearly they stated that, oh, sorry. 
Ah, okay, I come to that uh, here. Yeah. Now this is R one R two is the radius of the cylinder. Radius of the cylinder. I mean, this is the equation. I mean, whatever we discuss, this equations. He introduced that uh, Poisson ratio values. Now, yeah, introduce the Poisson ratio value. Finally, he again simplified this equation. Whatever we discuss the equation, see. Finally, I mean, simplified this equation. Okay. Now, this is a based on context. Like this, I mean, I will come to you later. I mean, why we are considering R one R two? Okay. <clears throat> The cylinders are made of isotropic material. I mean, these are the assumption. What we are discussed in strength of material subject some bending theory. The material should be uh, uniform cross section, right? The material should be isotropic, right? The material should be uh, the transverse load must be in act perpendicular to the axis of the theory, <laughs> axis of the bar. That's what we discussed in the strength of material beam theory. Similarly, we are following some assumptions while preparing. I mean, <clears throat> while satisfying with uh, his concept. Okay, for satisfying with his concept, the cylinder is made of isotropic material. <clears throat> the elastic material not exceeded <clears throat> elastic limit of the material should not exceeded the permissible value. R one R two is very large compared to the B. Now, R one R two is very large compared to B. Where the deformation is happening, <clears throat> deformation is happening in that sense. Where the stress distribution is acting, this distribution is acting compared to that. R one R two is bigger value. Hence, now we are going to introduce that. I mean, R one R two. We are going to find out where it is contact happening. That particular region we are going to concentrate here. Now, particular region. See here. This is the region. <clears throat> This is the region. Now I am considering this is a gear pinion one, pinion gear, pinion. Sorry, this is the pinion side. This is a gear side. This is a pinion tip. This is a gear tip. <clears throat> Now where is the? I mean the effective region, the effective region. That only I now I am focusing that effective region. That's what earlier we introduced d one, one by d one plus one by d two. He introduced that. Now. Again, he reduced to one by R one plus one by R two. Now, now what he is saying here, he would like to find out the effective region R one from the pinion side, R two. For from this triangle, we able to define this R one R two. Now see here, I mean this is a triangle. Right. This is the. Similarly, the another triangle from this side, we able to define. This is the. We already discussed enough information in the fundamental law of gearing. Now this is from this sine alpha, sine al. I mean R one. This is R one. This is sine alpha. What is this R one? I mean, sine alpha is equal to sine alpha is equal to sine alpha R one. I mean, R one divided by d dp by two is equal to sine alpha. From this relation, we able to find out we able to find out what is R one <clears throat> is the effective region. Okay. Similarly, we able to find out what is R two. This is R two is equal to D two into sine alpha by two. That's what they given clarity here. Just uh, see this. Uh, he already point. I mean, given the brief explanation also about uh, why we are choosing R one R two here. That there are two reasons for considering the radii of the curvature of the curvature at the point of con point of the contact or pitch point. Now see here the wear on the gear. <clears throat> We are on the gear tooth. We are on the gear tooth generally occurs or near the pitch point. Mostly wear is occurs at the nearly nearly the pitch point or contact region of the matting gears or missing gears or missing gear and teeth. Missing gear gear teeth or I'm sorry, matting gears teeth or matting gear teeth and pinion teeth. Okay, now I mean when. I mean, this is that's not only we are considered that is near the pitch line. So when only one gear 
one pair of teeth and i mean carries sorry when only i mean during that time pair of gears had and share the entire load <clears throat> entire load the contact occurs at the pitch point contact occurs at the pitch point hence we are considering that region i mean one is the contact takes place in the top and bottom of the tooth profile i mean see here the top means whatever we consider here now in this region i mean in this uh, pinion side in the bottom region in this gear side okay that's what we are considering finally we came in 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 we are introducing this whatever we discussed earlier now this uh, i mean this relation so whatever r1 r2 relations i am substituting this equation now this is i can only consider 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 from this relations substitute our r1 r2 value now this is now actually ratio factor <clears throat> I mean, ratio factor is equal to two is that g divided by is that g plus is that p. Now this is ratio factor we are using. This ratio factor I mean is that g. What is is that g? Is that g is nothing but now I mean in term we already know d p there. What is the d? D is equal to d is equal to m is that now is that from these relations? For example, d p is equal to m is that is that m means is that p. From this relation, we able to find out what is is that p and is that g. Substitute this. Just remember this formula: ratio factor. I mean, ratio factor is nothing but two is that g divided by is that g plus is that p. Okay, but actually we didn't uh, uh, go through this. Uh, I mean, deep explanation. Just directly you understand ratio factor is nothing but two is that g divided by. Is that G plus is that B? Now, see here. Now I am taking this <clears throat> whatever we discussed this equation. Now, at that part only I am taking here, and now I am simplifying this DP dash plus DG divided by DG DP dash DP. Just I am simplifying this relation. Finally, it's coming like this. This relation I am not modifying. I have written in terms of ratio factor two by Q into DP dash. Now. Q is nothing but now two is at G divided by is at G plus is at P. When you substitute here, Q is here, Q value. Finally, you are going to get this value. Okay, that ratio we are consider that empirical relation we are considering ratio factor. The ratio factor also it has it might have been given to you in the table, not designed at our books. Okay, now <clears throat> substitute here. <clears throat> now substitute this. Value in this original equation where this equation is, then finally we are getting R1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 is equal to 4 by Q dP dash sine alpha. Substitute this. Whatever we got, whatever we have derived, 2 by Q into d dash p. Substitute here. Find we are getting 4 divided by Q dP dash sine alpha. Now, I mean for this, <clears throat> now we already know that. <clears throat> I mean in the common normal. Through the common normal, the PN is acting. We already know that, right? Then PN is nothing but a PT by cos alpha. We already discussed while discussing the force analysis of the tooth. Now, now what is PT here? PT by cos alpha. I mean, this is one relation. Now, L is equal to B. I mean, this is we are considering the actual length of the whatever I shown. I have shown in the last figure, actual length of the gear or pinion is equal to face width of the gear or pinion now this relation h j k we are substituting in this our original equation <clears throat> this equation d finally well, i mean this values h j and k substituting on our original equation d finally we are getting this is equation compressive stress acting in the in the gear and pinion interface okay now See here, now this is the, <clears throat> from this relation, see, I mean, from this relation, I mean, sigma c squared, I'm taking this term. <clears throat> oh, sorry. One minute.
yeah now this is sigma c square i mean from this lesson i am only taking this uh, ter term terms sigma c squared into sin beta cos sorry sin alpha cos alpha these are the constant once you define alpha value will it changes no once the pressure angle define once we design the gear tooth based on pressure angle the pressure angle doesn't change the material property will it change <clears throat> doesn't change okay once we defined this uh, compressive stress, permissible compressive stress, that is also doesn't change. Hence, I am taking these relations. These relations are only I am considering, and this is the constant. <clears throat> these three, this these parameters I am considering. Sigma c squared. Take it to here. Sigma c squared into <clears throat> the sine alpha cos alpha into one by e one plus one by e two divided by one by four. Now I am considering this is nothing but uh, my load stress factor because these are the constant parameter. But PT is it may increase suddenly you may increase the power transmission capacity. It may increase the PT. It may reduce. That is depends upon your operating condition, <clears throat> right? Now, now the I mean these are the uh, these are the things we are not considering. Only these things we are considering. For finding the stress factor, load stress factor, when we are considering <clears throat> the unit also matching, and finally this is no unit, <clears throat> no unit. One, the, hence I am considering only this component for defining my K. I mean the load stress factor. I mean you may ask that why they are considering K, why they are telling load stress factor. They might have improved it. <clears throat> load stress factor through experiment, they might have improved it. I mean, this load stress factor also given for different materials in the design data book. <clears throat> okay. Now, I mean, already we know that the sigma c squared value. Now, I would, we would like to write. Now, what is this? This terms going to be k. Then finally, p t is what now? If I'm considering these are these terms are going to be load stress factor. Finally, p t is equal to. Now I'm considering. This PTM key, keep it in the right hand side. You take these are going to be in the left hand side. The left hand side we already we already discussed about the K <clears throat> sigma c squared into sine alpha cos alpha into one plus one by e one plus one by e two whole divided by one point four. We already assumed that the K load stress factor. Now from this relation, I would like to define PT. PT is equal to the right hand left hand side k is there into <clears throat> k into bq into dp dp now this is our nothing but our buckingham equation k bq into i mean buckingham equation <laughs> that's what pt is equal to whatever bq into dp dash into k now this is buckingham equation now when pt increases Pt increases, which one going to increase? Here, B is a constant, I mean, face width, right? K is factor, we already discussed. Dp is constant, I mean, pitch circle, I mean, sorry, pitch circle diameter of the pinion or pitch circle diameter of the gear, whatever. But only the K, <clears throat> K is in terms of now, K is, K is it depends on our I mean, sorry, K, sorry, Q also, sorry, Q also constant, sorry, I did one mistake, Q also constant, Q also constant here, Q also constant, because it's, it's, I mean, the ratio factor, 2 is at G, divided by Z to P plus Z G, only the varying thing, K, how the K is varying now, <clears throat> when increase the PT, tangential load, obviously that is, compressor is going to be increased, Right? Hence, PT increases, sigma C increase, or K going to be increased. <clears throat> That's what K is going to be increased. Then K is increased up to permissible limit. Then when the K is reached to permissible limit, we are considering, that time we are considering PT is nothing but SW, VS10. <clears throat> Hence, we are finding, yes, I mean, instead of PT, we are putting SW. <clears throat> now this is i mean sigma c now i mean whatever we discuss we have beams and the similar concept i applied here 
okay this is a wear strength of the gear tooth <clears throat> i mean sigma c is a comparative i mean surface endurance strength of the material <clears throat> surface endurance strength of the material now this is the bucking equation now for, suppose for internal gear for internal gears the gear ratio we are using this 2zg divided by zg minus zp now furthermore explanations about load factor i mean the load factor k can be this can be further simplified in terms of bernal hardness number because as i as we discussed early that is the mean that wear strength is based on the surface endurance strength surface endurance strength is nothing but depends on material hardness hence we would like to write this equation in terms of bernal hardness number hence we are into hence the k the load factor further simplified the gears simplified <clears throat> when they are considering some of the constant parameters for gears are made of steel gears made of steel okay and uh, the gears made of steel and the gears made of steel the gear with the 20 degree pressure angle <clears throat> I mean, in this case, the steel and both the pinion and gear, we assumed that 206 e power 3 newton per millimeter square, taking modulus of both the pinion and gear, <clears throat> pressure angle is 20 degree. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I mean, this is also that guy who developed a gene Neumann. I mean, Neumann. Now, here, this he introduced that sigma c is equal to 0.27 into bhn. This is especially for steel, especially for steel. <clears throat> now, sigma in terms of kilogram force per Newton per mm square, then in terms of this is in terms of Newton per mm square, that's all. Now, this relation, whatever sigma c value substitute here. This is already we discussed, k is equal to sigma c square sin alpha cos alpha. This relation we already discussed. Substitute here, then, I mean, alpha we know, alpha we know. Now we are considering specific material steel and we are considering specific pressure angle 20 degree i mean most of the case we are considering specific pressure angle 20 degree we already discussed that when the 20 degree we are following we may avoid this interference effect <clears throat> okay <clears throat> that's what we are considering 20 degree now this is the substitute here we are finally getting our k value in terms of bernal hardness number phn squared divided by 100 <clears throat> Now, this is our K value. Now, K is equal to 0.16 BHN divided by 100 whole square. Now, I come to this, the above equations. One, anyway, whatever I told, this above equation only valid for 20 degree pressure angle <clears throat> and steel material. While consider the gear and teeth, I mean, uh, Young's modulus values. 206 e power 3 newton per mm square in that value only that's suitable suppose for other material we have to go for whatever we discussed that whatever we discussed equation suppose other material we have to directly use this equation <clears throat> whatever we discuss this equation k value for finding the k value for other materials <clears throat> Okay, now this is the sum of the material. Young's modulus is given, Poisson is given. Now, for steel, cast steel, spiral cast iron, cast tin in bronze, and tin in bra tin bronze. These are the material properties are given. Now, Poisson is given. We can directly substitute in K. K. I mean, uh, load stress factor K. We can find out the K value because these are the parameters required when we are going for the our uh, <coughs> design of gear. Now, whatever we consider the beam strength, <clears throat> what we discussed beam strength, I mean, yes, B greater than P effective load. Here, if we introduce yes, B is equal to P effective load in TFS, factor of safety, right? Similar way, I'm introducing, I mean, wear strength is equal to P effective load into factor of safety. <clears throat> Now we know this formula, yes, W already. PF also we already we discussed. Then equating this to be able to find out the model of the gear. Model of the gear or pinion. Now this is a PF already we discussed. <clears throat> now SW.
हेलो ओके सॉरी नाउ यस डब्ल्यू वी नो दिस बेस्ड ऑन बगिंग हम इक्वेशन जस्ट नो वी हैव बीन डिस्कस्ड बी क्यू इनटू डी डी डैश पी इनटू क्यू के दिस इज द I mean ratio factor. This is a pitch, diam pitch circle diameter of pinion. This is the load stress factor. This is the phase width of the gear. Now here I am not changing the equation. Just I am modifying the equation without changing the value of the equation. M I mean divided by multiplied by M, and the DP has been written in terms of M into ZP. Finally, S W this equation B and C equal to these two equation are substitute in this equation A. we able to find out this module the this module is based on our buckingham equation model is based on sorry i mean buckingham equation or wear strength wear strength <clears throat> because the beam that uh, i mean that the design of the gears we are going to follow based on the beam strength and wear strength when we are following wear strength we have to verify our model because model also given in the table but we have to verify i mean this we have to verify our table value with respect to beam strength with respect to wear strength now this is a simple uh, i mean a conclusion about whatever we discussed the buckingham equation this equation is comparisons we discussed this also we discussed okay now some of the terminology <clears throat> this is our buckingham equations or oh, sw wear strength is equal to bq into dp dash k this we discuss these are the some just we conclusion about this whatever we discuss as of now okay now this is equal just now we discuss please go through that this notation you should know sigma c p is p is the force presenting in the two cylinders okay d1 d is the diameter of two cylinders e1 e2 okay this engs modulus of the two cylinders now now we have to follow some procedure for designing our gears Or teeth, gear teeth, or uh, gear or pinion. Now, first is function or function element of gear. I mean, determine the force acting based on the force analysis. We have to find out P T, P R, and P P N. Okay. Now, select the suitable material, <clears throat> and uh, now we have to determine the gear design based on the uh, surface, based on the static load or a dynamic load or surface destruction. i mean that is depends on i mean i mean especially we can consider to determine the failure mode based failure mode of the gear teeth or pinion teeth with respect to bending or pitting bending means wear beam strength levis concept pitting is wear strength based on buckingham concept okay now that's what we discuss here and uh, determine the geometric dimensions for the element estimation based on model model as of now we discuss right now these are the standard uh, empirical relation for a dead end addendum h is equal to m dead end 1.25 m model clearance 0.25 model clearance also we discussed everything we discussed in the beginning class, earlier classes working depth we discussed two times of model and work whole depth is 2.25 times of model tooth thickness 1.5708 times of model tooth space 1.5708 times of model fillet radius 0.4 times of model this once we able once we have found the model based on beam strength or wear strength then we substitute here finding our other parameters for design our gear now uh, later we have to verify our design our whatever our design is within the safe limit or not in that also while under while discussing problem you can understand okay pt this is the notation you should know what is pt mt v is velocity pitch line velocity this velocity factor sb sw fs okay now <clears throat> just this also same this everything we no I mean now that beam strength and wear strength at is i mean at the single slide i have been written i mean uh, briefly now see here this is we already discussed with respect to beam strength okay this is um, uh these are the parameters this is the parameter we didn't discuss most of the time the gear design face with b is equal to 10 times model considered okay now this is the velocity factor now this is the final stage of gear this final stage of gear design with respect to effective load 
now here this only we didn't discuss this is the error error is uh, e mean error in error presented in opinion plus error presented in gear mean i mean due to manufacturing error okay this is the our pi pi is i tell you this is the i yeah in the next page i forgot pi is the tolerance factor tolerance factor m plus this is this, these are the things we are going to discuss in the during problem don't worry <clears throat> okay now uh, this already we discussed now check for design uh, this is okay please you have any doubt uh, shall we go to problem okay these are whatever already discussed the gear ratio i what are the in what are the notation we didn't discuss those things we discussed this is very important this is the strength of the gear or pinion i mean that will decide either we are going to design the gear our design is going based on gear or pinion with respect to strength okay this equation okay service factor pitch and velocity what is the missing things here only this is a set i mean tolerance factor and almost they have given some standard value for grades quality of gear and the method of manufactures grade 6 means the total error this is grade 6 now grade 8 means we have to use this standard empirical relation to find out our total error <clears throat> y is given tolerance factor that equation also given here i mean m plus 0.25 whole square root of d dash guys please someone reflect any any doubt no sir no sir okay now i come to the problem see just see this problem once you are understanding concept the problem is very simple just this is a, it is required to design it is required to design a pair of spur gears with a 20 degree full depth invalid tip based on levis equation the velocity factor is to be used to account for the dynamic load the pinion shaft is connected to 10 kW and the speed of motor is 1440 rpm the starting torque of motor is 150 percentage of the rated torque i mean now the speed reduction this is a gear ratio is a 4 is to 1 i mean okay the pinion as well as gear is made of plain carbon steel the factor of safety can be considered 1.5 fs the design the gear specific the dimensions is the suggest suitable based on this surface hardness of the gears now see here now this is the power given speed given okay speed shaft given and the speed ratio given our gear ratio is given okay this ultimate sense given f is given starting torque 150 times of rated torque now now come to this i mean their first estimation of model based beam strength now we are mod based on beam strength we are discussing now i mean both gears are same material they already given same material both gear and pinion made of same material then when these both are same material then pinion is going to be weaker than gear we already discussed in the theory okay sigma b into y based on that concept we discussed pinion when both material are same when both sorry both pinion or gear or both gear are same material sorry pinion is pinion and gear both are same material hence the pinion is weaker than gear okay now now i mean they given this uh, depth i mean uh, this is a pressure angle also given okay now is that p is given 18 from this problem already given uh, 18 18 where they given this 18 okay so see zp pinion gear where they given 18 are they given 
okay they have assumed that 18 i mean is that b anyway i mean some of the parameters we can assume it but even in our exam in our problem we are going to give the values of zp they assumed it 18 that's all now the pressure ratio i mean already gear ratio we know i mean is that g divided by is p is equal to 4 then from that we can the gear is 72 number of tooth on the pin is 18 because they assumed it 18 assumed it 18 yeah uh yes yes even we discussed na? i mean 14 14.5 degree pressure angle and 20 degree pressure angle some standard number of teeth we had we already discussed uh, in the under 12 for stub teeth what is number of teeth may be considered like that we discussed already based on that they considered 18. there are especially the three pressure angle 20 degree 14.5 degree and 20 degree stub teeth i think so these three teeth corresponding pressure these three teeth sorry this three pressure angle corresponding number of teeth also number of tooth also we discussed in the previous previous class i mean that also obtained from the standard uh, data book only so based on that they assumed that is that p is 18 now substitute this is in the i mean uh, torque equation you able to find out what is the torque now go for levis equation now levis factor is given from the table now see here our Pinion teeth is pinion number of pinion tooth is a third, I mean 18, 18 corresponding y is 0 0.308. Okay, now starting torque divided by rated torque already given service factor starting torque divided by rated torque already given 1.5. 1.5. Okay, now <clears throat> the velocity factor as here they assumed it to 5 meter per second. Okay, now find out this velocity factor 5 meter per second. We have to go. We are now we are using C V is equal to 3 by 3 plus V. From this, we are able to find out 3 by 8. Now, what is this? I mean, uh, uh, phase width to model ratio is at 10. Phase width to model ratio for 10 is equal to B is equal to 10 m. 10 m from these relations we discussed. Now we are doing, we are going to do cross verification later. Now, anyway, m is equal to now. This is a formula with respect to which formula? Beam strength formula. The model is with respect to beam strength formula. Then finally, we have found that m is equal to 4.16 mm. Now <laughs> define the size of the gear. I mean, model 5 mm, because here, here also the standard data book they have given the choice preferred 1 to 1 5 mm suppose here 4.5 is there i'm considering one suppose my module size is for 5.2 then i have to take 5.5 choice 2 suppose my model size is 11 mm i ought to take 12 mm suppose my model size from choice one suppose my model size is 13 mm i have to take 14 mm this model size 2 so sorry choice two so based on that i have chosen 5 mm round figure value i considered 5 mm from the choice two i mean so a uh, substitute in the empirical relation whatever we discuss we can find out pitch circle diameter of the pinion pitch circle diameter of the gear and the face width of the gear 10 mm from this relation now whatever these are the empirical relation now we have to cross, do cross verification based on our design now Go for the check for the design. PT is equal to 2 MT dot by DP dash. I mean, see here, the DP is, we have found using the empirical relation. And MT, we know already how much torque is generated. We know already here, right? How much torque is generated. Then substitute here, we are able to find out what is this tangential force. Now, velocity. Velocity is, I mean, pi D dash NP whatever velocity once we know this uh, empirical base and empirical lesson we know the pitch circle diameter of the pinion i mean this is np is uh, already given 1440 then from this lesson we have found that our velocity is 6.7858 meter per second all right now substitute our cv value i mean this is our point point three zero six because now we would like to verify our beam strength is greater than equal greater than or equal to our effective load 
that's what we are doing cross verification here because now we are verifying our beams when greater than or equal to p effective load okay so now now i am not using this is this also we are assumption now i am using exact values whatever values i have found based on the empirical relation i am introducing here i am finding my velocity then finding my this velocity then this is my effective load based on practical condition cs by cv cs is 1.5 pt is already we have found here right then in cv we know this is our effective load now come to the beam strength i mean m we know i mean b b we know sigma b from this we able to find out now our sb is greater than sp is greater than p effective hence our i mean gear design is within the safe limit only now surface hardness of the gears now we would like to find out the surface hardness of the gears here i mean this is the ratio factor i mean we know zg and zg zp now then sw we know right b value we know q dp k value in terms of bhn squared we already discussed 0.16 into bhn divided by 100 whole square this is we already discussed then from this from this we able to find out what is the bernal hardness number of this gear okay so that's all okay any doubt please hey, kalyan are you there in the meeting hello no doubt sir okay i stop it here what is time okay 11 11 10 okay i stop it here uh, sorry you didn't inform me actually you uh, you someone who told, earlier class someone pointed out while when we exceeded our time okay no problem please inform me someone okay Kalyan, are you there in the meeting? Yes, sir. Why you didn't inform? Yeah, please share me the attendance, Kalyan. Yeah, please. Anyone doubt? Anyone have a doubt? Please. No, no doubt. Sir. I will share the attendance. Okay, but hey yeah, guys, I am requesting that. I uh, mean, for ten to eleven class means ten fifty-five. You have to intimate me. Otherwise, I I am not reason for that extending the class next ten minutes or five minutes. Okay. Usually, I am extending class maximum to five minutes only. Today, I because I am in the presentation mode, I didn't check that time. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Karthi. Thank you, guys.